here
So I came tonight to pre present about the uh, weather balloon project that the eighth grade participated again in this, this year. They were supposed to come in May and present the board meeting in May, but when it's a student-led project, uh, they're not they're not totally familiar with the ins and outs of trying to schedule getting on a board meeting. And so we, in plus I, I believe the meetings we had many of other things. So. Um, now that school's out, I volunteer to come in and talk about the project. Um, I did put together a presentation. I'm not sure if I can plug into that. I have a cord, but I'm not sure it's the box or not or a projector on. But um, while that's warming up, though, I just want to say that uh, and I feel like this project is a great representative of a representation of what we do at Westside. Uh, I know that a lot of thought and money has been put into our school. And uh, we just want to show that th that, that investment is paying off, and that it's a worthwhile investment, and our kids are really um, striving to attain the highest levels. And uh, hopefully, you know, Dr. Sal made a comment about college career readiness, and hopefully, we're we're helping that cause along. And um, so, this project is uh, is our capstone project um, for the eighth grade. Uh, in the eighth grade, they, they participate in quite a few different projects. Uh, two of the major being the science fair, which we were the number one school in the state of Connecticut in regards to middle school. We cleaned house at the science fair this year, did extremely well. Um, but we also we also do a, a purely student-led project, uh, launching weather balloons. And uh, I'm not sure if it's Tom. Yep. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to go into presentation one because my, my computer at times seems to freeze up. So, but um, like I said, this year, this is our second year, we've launched weather balloons uh, from Danbury High School. And um, so I will share this presentation with anyone that wants. There's some videos. I know that the time is kind of limited, so um, I'll hold off and show you the videos. But feel free to watch them there. This presentation was created by students. Um, so let me give you a little bit of a project overview. Uh, so like I said, the eighth grade participate um, in a truly led student-centered student uh, project. It's kind of our capstone. Um, we ask students to break into four different groups, and it's self-chosen by them. So we have a team that deals with design of payloads. We have a science team that learns about uh, um, uh, science equipment or uh, a, a, a science instruments that go on to weather balloons and they learn coding, computer coding for it. We have a weather team that works with Westcon. We have a partnership with them in which they learn about weather forecasting, weather prediction. Uh, they come up with launch protocols. And then we have a PR team, which is responsible for raising money, working on kind of some of the logistics. Uh, they work on advertising. They also work on media. Um, getting publication, public publicity for the whole project. Um, and uh, through our partnership with Westcons, kids were able to learn about weather, um, different scientific instruments and design techniques. Um, they also learned to uh, a very important skill of communication, to be able to communicate with not only their peers, but with people within the school, adults within the school, but people outside the school. They reached out to several different businesses, several different uh, organizations seeking help or donations. And quite often, I would get phone calls from those organizations to make sure it was legit. But at, at all times, the, the people would compliment how well the students would present themselves, present, you know, and represent our school, and how clear they were in their communication and what they wanted. I like doing better than what I'm doing right now. So. Um, <laughs> With that being said, uh, the, the teams then work on the teachers just act as guides. We're there to help facilitate, we're there to answer questions or help them harvest resources if needed. But really, we leave it up to the students. Um, they talk to students from the past about their experience. Um, and then again, you know, so we try and launch two balloons, which we're the only third school in the state to, to do a weather balloon project. And as far as I know, we're the only one that ever does two balloons. And we've been the most successful thus far in the state of Connecticut trying to pull a project off like this. 
Um, so last year we did the same project. Uh, we launched two balloons. We had one balloon reach 80,000 feet, another reach 72,000. Like I said, we're going to the third school in the state of Connecticut. This year the students decided they wanted to go bigger and better, so we got a larger balloon. Uh, we used one balloon that was the same size as last year, and then another balloon that was double the size. So when you inflate the balloon, its approximate diameter is about five feet, eight feet diameter. Um, and the smaller balloon, when it reaches its first elevation, that's where it'll finally pop because the gas is expanding, is about 18 feet. And the larger balloon is 30 feet. So if you can imagine across the size of this room, that's, that's how large this balloon is when it finally pops. Um, and they overcame some of the challenges that they, we occurred last year. And the biggest thing that we saw was to make this more student trips, more student led. So we really put a lot of the communication on them put a lot of the onus on them. Since it was our first time last year, the teachers were a lot more hands-on, and since we've had the experience, we kind of know what's going on, we kind of really took a step back and let the kids really come to us to ask questions. And that's, I think, really what we want at Westside. We really want a student-centered, student-based learning. What are the kids, what do they need? Um, and so they came up with their mission. They wanted to successfully launch a high-altitude balloon known as a HAB, more commonly known as a weather balloon, into the stratosphere, which is also known as near space. So near space starts at around 70,000 feet, goes well above 200,000 feet, or true space is something like 150 miles above the Earth's surface. So we're not quite <laughs> anywhere near there, but we're, you can see the curvature of the Earth, let's put it that way, when you're up this high. It's, it's a pretty amazing feat. Um, and they wanted to collect more data on the atmosphere, test scientific experiments, and they just wanted different views of the Earth, different views that we didn't get last year. So, with that being said, um, we, like I said, we have a design team, a weather team, a science team, and a PR team, and this is all self-chosen. The kids, you know, they fill out an application, we have certain amounts of slots, they get to choose, they have a backup just in case one of the teams is full. Cool. We try and divvy it up so the four teams would have 25 kids. But one of them, my team had 27, the PR team had 22, the science team had about 20. So they were, they, it wasn't totally split evenly, but it, it was really, we tried to accommodate what the kids wanted to learn and wanted to do on this project. And I think that's what makes this so special is that even though like the PR team, they're not working on the science as much, but they are learning, working on some great communication skills learning. We brought Melissa Augustine, who's in charge of the PR team. She brought in an advertising agency to work, but she had some friends in that industry that came in and worked with the students. Like I said, I brought Westcon in to work with the rest of the teams. Ms. Singer, who runs the weather team, she knew very little about weather. She's our math teacher in the eighth grade, and they worked hand in hand. Students would come in, professors would come in, it was really cool. We um, tested some of our reflectors and the design team in West Pond brought in this microwave setup so we could actually test the, the reflectability of the of the reflectors. Uh, and uh, it was really cool. Like the data was was amazing. Some of these ideas that we've seen online and that are commonly used in web balloons turned out not to work at all. <laughs> and so you know the safety aspect where people are assuming that you know the reflector is meant so when it's up flying through you know 30 40 000 feet a jet airliner can pick you up on its radar and it's a requirement by the faa to have this attached and we found out that the most commonly used designs are going to work so we know and so we were able to redesign and found designs that did work and that was through that collaboration with westcon so um so in the design team again they were, they researched current payload designs, they worked with, they had a constraint of these two balloons up, each balloon has two payloads. Last year, um, each payload was roughly three and, three and a half pounds, so we set a constraint of two, two, 2.2 pounds, trying to cut that down, and we were pretty successful with that. Um, they had to work on the placement of the electronics, making sure that they were safely, um, safely, uh, placed in the, in the payload, but also that they could operate properly. They had to learn how to rig um, the parachute. They had to work on a cutaway system. They had to safely learn how to assemble this whole process because when something's flying at 90,000 feet, even if it weighs two pounds, if there's no parachute attached, it could, it could fall at 30, 40 miles an hour, and that could really hurt somebody. So we clearly we don't want that. It's, 
you know, Joe and I had a long discussion last year about safety. Um, and so some of our accomplishments is, again, we tested the reflectors. Uh, they had to construct and test final payload designs. So we had different scenarios. We have Dr. LeBanc and I have a thing that we use in engineering called the crusher. So we can test stress loads that we, um, they had different themes with the payloads. One was a tribute to breast cancer. One was the homeless shelters, the food banks here in Danbury. One was uh, for NASA. And then one was just for our own school. So they had their own themes to it. Um, learning to safely rig, which again was very important. And uh, we're in the, almost there making them waterproof. Uh, we've been lucky the past few years we haven't had them water because the whole, all four payloads and four are carrying about $1,500 in equipment. And there are, the odds of falling in water are actually very great. And so we've been working on because we want to recover this equipment and reuse it every year, which we were able to do last year. And hopefully we'll be able to do the same this year. Um, so, like I said, there's some, you can see through this presentation, there's some pictures of the kids working on various aspects. You know, in my class and the design team, they get to use all sorts of tools, the, the professional tools to help build these things so they get that really hands-on experience. So it's not only sitting in front of a computer working on 3D modeling, but it's actually, we're actually physically building these things and looking at different ways we can hear different types of materials. Um, the science team, uh, excuse me, the weather team, uh, you know, again, they had to learn about predicting weather, forecasting, and not just predicting weather here on the surface. The weather on the surface can be vastly different than at 40, 50, 60,000 feet. The winds are a lot different. They're shifting in different directions. Um, they had to learn how to uh, model the launch. So there's some different computer models, but you have to know some input numbers. You have to know ascension rates, descension rates, burst altitudes, the weight of your payloads. They had to understand all of this physics to correctly model where our weather balloons were going to go. Um, and, you know, they had, so not only that, they had to create a timeline for the launch, like when was our absolute launch date. We had to work with Dr. Labanka because one of the launch dates they had chosen SVAC testing, we couldn't do it during then, so we had to find another time. And so they came up with that. They were the overseers. So if you think about a way like uh, some of the big corporations do project management, you always have one kind of project to manage, and they were kind of that managing team. They, they set up protocols. They were also responsible for tracking the weather balloons, helping us track it so we had real-time data of knowing where it was flying to. Um, and so they, they had a huge responsibility, um, and I feel like the kids really came out of that. They, they, they really applied standards that they used not only in seventh grade, excuse me, eighth grade, but things that they learned in sixth and seventh grade. So they're getting this nice spiral curriculum and applying to it. So it's, it's a really cool project um, with regards to that. So, the science team, uh, we had quite a few kids, so we used microprocessors, Arduino microprocessors, and they're basically small, kind of mini computers that you can um, program to do a variety of things. Sorry, a variety of things, but um, they learned how to program in C plus language, which is actual real uh, computer programming language as used by professionals. They tested their sensors, and we did a few new sensors this year. Um, and then our design, our, excuse me, our PR team, um, they were responsible again for uh, gaining money, acquiring materials. Uh, they raised about $1,200 from GoFundMe. They did t-shirts. They made another few hundred dollars from that. Uh, they did raffles. We actually had NBC from uh, West Hartford that came out. Uh, Connecticut NBC came out and filmed us. We had the news patch. And so I think overall, the project was a huge success. Um, and where the balloons are currently, um, I haven't had the time, to, I've been out to see them, but I have not been able to retrieve them sitting in the trees. And right on the border of Connecticut, Rhode Island, according to the modeling, we reached, we kind of met our goal, we reached between 80 and 90,000 feet. We definitely exceeded last year's goal, but we had a one goal of like 105,000 feet. So, um, I hope to go out next week. I've had students emailing me all this week. When are we going to go get them? But it is about a two-hour and 20-minute drive, and 
whereas last year they landed like two minutes from my house, which is <laughs> perfect. But, so this year they, they flew directly east from when they took off, and they traveled for about two and a half hours, and uh, it was a great project. So, so what town did they land in? Bull Town? Bull Town? Bull Town? Bull Town? Bull Town? Bull Town? Yeah, so it's like, it's, it's a high, it, I guess if it's a crow flies, it's not that far, but as you drop, there's no real easy way to get there. So uh, it took me, when I drove out, it took me about two hours to plane it. So I've got to talk to some of the landowners, um, local fire department, and hopefully we'll have them out of trees next, next week. And we'll be able to analyze the data with Westcon and be able to use that for information next year. So, um, you know, I appreciate you letting me speak tonight. I know you guys got a cool agenda, and I um, appreciate that you put me on right at the last minute. And again, it's a student-led project, and these the kids did a fantastic job. And this is a great representation of well, this, as the board, this is great and we love that. This, but the idea the board has had, and our, my vision is, we need to move this into the other middle schools. And we have exploration people as we move forward. We couldn't quite fund it, though, but the idea is to take a project and make it common among them so they have similar experiences like that, uh, to work with the coaches at each of the buildings. So that's my hope that we're able to do that. Dr. Walker has been spearheading it for us. So this kind of thing can really tie themes in the house, which is just a risk. And that's been a board's challenge. How do we take what works so well at these and try to move some of it at least into our other schools? Well, I think hopefully some of the curriculum that I've worked on with um, Dr. LeBanc and my team of teachers can be used. And I do collaborate with like, Bernardo at Rogers Park, there's some of the teachers that I've already started collaborating with and that they've seen come talk to me. And I've always told them that email me if you have questions. I know Sherry Pendergrass, she's also been reached out to me about a few projects. I do an egg drop in seventh grade. Um, we do uh, a couple different projects in sixth grade, and I'm more than happy. And I think that's the starting point. Well, I guess what I'm saying is it, it's not the happenstance, the plan. Right. Because that is, that's the way it is working. Right. Well, our hope is to actually select and say, okay, we are going to focus on that. Absolutely. So sure that happens. And I think, I think some of the challenge, too, is, 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 you know, with the teachers, as they get more comfortable with the exploration, is when they get on board, is to make a project like this successful as a teacher, you have to learn to take a step back, which is very, very difficult to do. But I think with coaches and experience from other teachers and you know, maybe using the PLC times or the PD times so that those other middle schools can collaborate with us and talk about that. I think that would be a huge step forward. I, I, I appreciate the challenge that it is. Yeah. I face it at our own school, but it's, we really, I feel like we've made and, great And sense. that VR team that raised money, I mean, did they use it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. And you showed me every aspect of the project. Right. And thank you, Scott. Thank you very, very much. Not just for the presentation, but thank you for the work that you've done. I think the collaboration part of the community event, um, it really did. Because it's hard for you all to step aside and know what you do. But you do. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. It's very nice meeting you. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, I appreciate it. Have a great summer. Have a great summer. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. And remember, no trespass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if I have to climb the tree, yes. I just want to I'm actually, you know, that's a really good tree climb. So I think I'm okay. They're, they're up there. You weren't volunteering. Yeah, I'm going to climb the tree. In a week or five. All right, moving along. We want to get out of here. John, it is John. Uh, the Board of Education approved the allocation for the ECS Alliance grant in accordance with 16-105. Seconded by Pass. Do I hear any questions? Do you have any questions? Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Um, the Board of Education approved the 2016-2017 building rental rates in accordance with 16-106. Second. Seconded by Kathy. Any questions? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Do you want to say something? We, we have a pretty lengthy discussion on rates at, at um, sites and facilities. 
small rates uh, changes, nothing major, about 2% or so, because of some additions in hourly rates. So um, nothing major. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, yeah, the Board of Education accepted the May 2016 Operating Results Analysis General Fund in accordance with 16 107. Second. Second by Gladys. Any questions? Seeing none, you want to nutshell it? Okay. Just nutshell it. No, I mean, everything looks good. We're trending well on, on all, in our lawyers we see. Health insurance continues to show some um, increases in surplus. Right now, it's a conservative report about half a million dollars, we think, as of now. We don't have June claim numbers yet, and June can be a, a pretty crazy month for claims. So right now, um, that's unsure, but right now, we we'll have another year closing the black. Um, we're looking at a bunch of initiatives and items that we're trying to kick off for end of the year, um, some curriculum materials, those sorts of things. Um, but all in all, it's a solid year. So, you know, at the end of the year, whatever we have whatever we haven't expended, will go to our health care. Correct. Any any leftover surplus will be will be uh, transferred to city health insurance reserve money. So I had a conversation with Dave St. Larry about uh, actually it's early this morning. Remind us what we have in there now. Right now there's five point seven million dollars in the fund. In order for the board to be what's called fully reserved, it has to be about six point seven million, so about a million dollars away from being fully reserved. Any other yeah, discussion, guys? Any questions? Joe. No. Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. Any objections? Abstentions. All right. Seeing none, go. Let the Board of Education accept the May 2016 operating results analysis grants projects in accordance with 16 108. Second. Second by Michael. All right. Stay with no discussion. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Not having any opposed or abstaining. Uh, that the Board of Education approve the teacher evaluation plan in accordance with 16 109. Second. Second by Gladys. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Objections? No. Thank yes. you. We'll submit that to the state. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that the Board of Education authorizes the superintendent to sign the amendment. The amended agreement and the summer lunch program agreement with Sodexo in accordance with 16 110. Second by Gladys. Any questions? Anybody? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Objections? Abstentions? No? Passes. Chief. Let the Board of Education approve the revisions to the conduct codes as discussed at the last meeting. Seconded by Michael. Any questions? Any questions? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Instructions or abstentions? Seeing none. Passed. Ready. Thank you. Uh, those of you that um, came to graduation, thank you. It was a great ceremony. We had about 557 students uh, graduate uh, in an hour and 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, I thought the kids were phenomenal again this year. They were respectful of the speakers. They were respectful to themselves. Um, to the celebratory at the end, but appropriate. I just think it's just phenomenal to see the kids behave so well at graduation. Um, it just and as many kids. We the only thing happened this year we did have a problem with some of the parking. We we're looking at some of the middle school too, the way we spaced that. But high school parking. Uh, I got down at the bottom of that hill. I can't remember. Yeah. At, at 5, at 4.30, and we were supposed to be marching at 5. I was dressing as I was walking down there. It took a half hour to go, what is it, half a mile? But what they did, they closed the parking lots, and it stopped everybody doing U-turns and pushing people back. So I don't know how to get around that one, to tell you the truth, but that's what happened. So they started parking on lawns, which uh, I don't know what that result is. They let me in, obviously, but uh, there was a problem with that. So yeah. as we grow to 900 kids, I'm more in your class. I didn't go to the uh, graduation five, 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 five. But the middle school graduation was just the 
somehow we have to look at how we schedule them. Because once we finish the, I went to the 12.30, and once we finish to come out, it was just food rings. We know parents want to take pictures of the children. It's a proud day for everyone. And you couldn't move. You just got in the hallway, everyone was just breathing. And then the people that was coming in for the 2.30, they couldn't get in because the people that was coming out weren't moving. And if it, that, that there was nowhere for people to park. They had parked all the way down to, I think it's Golden Hill, and walk up because the people weren't moving in order for them to get in. So, I, you know, this is just my thing. Maybe 12.30 and 4.30 and maybe do the third one on another day and make it convenient and a little bit easier so parents can understand. You know, because the kids got their teachers already told the kids that they need to be there at a certain time and they want to be on time. So to have one from 12.30, I think the middle school, the uh, west side was at 2.30 and then Broadview was at 4.30. So it, it, it was just kind of catch They're going to review the times and all of that. We talked about, you know, some of those schools actually started on the park and moving ahead, moving up their own. And maybe the last one starting at seven. Mm -hmm. So they're going to look at that time if it's possible. Mm -hmm. They do need to put about an hour and a half between yeah. get people out, pictures of people in, so they need people to find the park. And maybe have course. someone directing people that's coming out of there at that first graduation. You know, we don't want to rush people, but you need to get out so that other people yeah, can want to take it. Right, and yes, you need to respect the rock bed. There was, a, there was a few people that were discussing it. West Side's the smallest group, and, and that was one of the things that a few of the parents were saying. They were in and out so fast that they might be best served to be the first group. You know, have them get in, get out, and, and maybe, to Gladys's point, a broader time in between, but that's what happened. I, I went there for West Side's, and everybody was still there. There was nowhere to park. And, but the, but the West Side one went really quick. Of course, West Side only had 100 kids this time, but even next year it will only be 200. Yeah, that's, when they put it in the middle, that's why they thought they would have less to accommodate. But they need to review that whole thing. Start early and go to late and give them about an hour, 90 minutes after, so people can take photos, move on, and then people come. We gotta look at that. But also, we all also have to be honest that parents now are working, and a lot of parents take off or, you know, come to the graduation. So when we're setting the times, you know, a lot of parents just can't take off. In my older days, I had sick time. I had personal time. And people now, if you don't have that kind of time when you work, you just lose a day. So we need to be constant when we go around and set the time and then 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock. That's mm -hmm. when parents can get their kids there. Somebody else would need to, to realize it takes longer. It's not everybody's doing high school. Yeah, they still blew over three nights and got the other issues, people not showing up. But I think they'll review that day too. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be improved. Yes. Um, the other thing is, ACE had a good moving up graduation ceremony as well. They changed it. It was at the um, at the center, at the Student Center. Student Center. center. It was about maybe an hour and 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you next year to come. I think you'll really enjoy it. They eliminated the day program. Did. Yes, and they have just a night program, and um, the speakers have been, they minimized that. It was really nice program, so next year. And I apologize to everybody for not being at anything. Um, Who's that a party? <coughs> <laughs> just okay, well, summer projects you want to mention? I think the only noteworthy one, obviously, is the high school project, which is recently updated to set the facilities to be. There's our first construction being up there uh, today with the roof beginning and the oil tank and all those other sorts of things. Uh, the Shelter Rock Portables, which we, we briefed the Sites Committee on, uh, we hired an architect for our associate to do the basic design drawings for that. We're going to go to the state on July 12th for the funding. And uh, that's when we want to say those are the two bigger pieces of uh, High school at groundbreaking, I believe. They're talking about you know foundation work for us beginning this, you know. Late summer, we need fall stuff. And we have, there's a handout that has everything. Yeah, I left everyone. Everybody's place in the morning. Yeah, the morning. Uh, for the board, I, someone asked about a month ago when we've been checking in to 
through uh, the French trip that was canceled. Yes. So there's been some problems. And, um,
but I'm saying if you in the future, <laughs> that's why I sent it to CAPS and I sent it to uh, the commissioner. It's just not right. This all started because about a week ago I got a call from Region 5, which is Amity on uh, Woodbridge. And they had, well, we, we, they heard we had a similar trip. And we didn't really know, so I reached out to the teacher and we found out there's some kids that were receiving funding. We were in the same position. You know, they have kids that money as well. I don't know how many districts have used that. that I don't know. Well, that's why I yeah. contacted the commissioner. Right there. And they're going to check it out. And CAPS. So they're going to check out. Check it out. Does anyone else have any questions? Anybody, Bill, or? Anybody else want to talk? Oh, Kim. Okay. Um, Kim, the
outsiders, as well as board members, that you're available sometime in the next five or six weeks uh, to sort of have a brainstorming session to kick off our plan of attack or how we're going to uh, tackle this particular project in, uh, in October. And I hope to have joining us uh, not only some board members available, but some of the community members that expressed interest. The person who's in charge of the School Governance Council of Henry High is excited to do it. Ember uh, is on board this film that they have. Part of the BTO meeting was assigned to join us. And uh, other legislators who took part in the first meeting we're going to reach out to see if they, if they would attend the second meeting. Uh, so we tried to go through an implement, implementation schedule. And that's my ideas for Dr. Sauer, some bullet points that we want to, to handle. So we're going to try to have a meeting that uh, gives us some sort of organization uh, and a pro forma as to how to go about and, and plan this particular project. So come October and November, uh, we at least have a meeting right ready. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to say anything? You told me that was your question. Uh, just briefly, uh, we completed some of right? And um, I want to thank everyone for participating in the meetings. I think um, I'm hoping that sometime in September that we can get together just as a group to discuss the new evaluation form that we talked about, look at the old one that we used and the new one that Kate sent down. And it will just be a meeting just to look at the form. That's all. Okay? And we'll do that sometime in September. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Nobody? Are we going to have a board retreat? Yes, we are. Where it is? Soon as we start up again. Right? We're having um, um, Do we have this house for our Two weeks in a <laughs> Yes, we are. Two weeks in a little bit. That's where we're going. I reserve the same place that the administrators went on their retreat today. Bill, where was that? 63 Beaverbrook Road in yeah. See if the GPS can get there. Okay. <laughs> Is there any chance it might have heat or air conditioning at that point? Got you one. Along those lines, we did contact, I was asked to contact the gentleman, his name, no, I'm sorry, that uh, worked with the board in the past. It's out of Hartford, and there's an organization there. Carol. Carol, yes. Yeah, Ted Carroll. Ted Carroll. And he's available and um, uh, in the fall. And he's going to come. And we're going to have a regular workshop. It'll be good. Like, kind of, at this one, we kind of was in the, we had it at the church. That's not the church. It's no longer the church, only the nursing school. Best it's the best, and this one will write all that, I swear to God. It will not be the same old same. I promise. <laughs> yeah, I swear, it's good. <laughs> just a nice swear to God, but it's going to be different. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that's it, guys. We can do, instead of funding back so much money from the city, just take out a little bit of what's happening with Black Angus. Okay, sure. It's part of professional development. Yeah. Take a ribbon that's all right. Okay. That's true. Okay. It's recorded that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, moving on. Executive session. I'm looking for a motion to enter into executive session, at which time I'm going to ask everyone, with the exception of Dr. Sal, and to leave the room. And members of the Board of Education. <laughs> just say a second for the first part. Just two things on Well. Right? I'll make them up. Who wants to be here? She needs to be here for the... Yeah. Oh, right. 